Okay, so let's talk about some really strange type of life. Something that was classified as animals for quite a long time, until the scientists realized that this particular animal does not reproduce sexually, despite containing a lot of animal characteristics. But then it also contains plant characteristics. It's able to use photosynthesis. Yet it's not really an animal, it's not really a plant, and it's not anything else, not a fungi, not a bacterium, it's basically something entirely different. And today this something is known as euglenid, a somewhat unusual group of single-cell organisms that basically contain some really unique features that no other organism possesses, and more importantly, contains a bit of everything from animals and plants. And though we've known about this organism for something like 200 years, this is an image produced back in 1838, it's really not until more recent times that biologists finally started to figure out exactly what this is. I mean, technically, it's still a little bit unclear, but today we definitely know so much more. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's talk about some of the recent discoveries from the recent study that talks a little bit more about this unusual organism and basically find out what we know about them and what they tell us about the evolution of life. Although intriguingly, a lot of the discoveries from this research basically began with the video you see right here. A YouTube video by Fabian Weston from Australia, who essentially filmed something we've never seen before. A transition for this particular organism from its normal state into what's known as a cyst. Or basically, a kind of a survival state in order for this organism to survive a lot of different hostile environments. We'll come back to this video in a few seconds, but first let's actually talk about this unusual mystery of ancient fossils that sort of bugged biologists for a very long time. For many decades, a lot of biologists kept finding these unusual sediments containing these very strange spherical structures. Okay, this one is maybe not so spherical, but a lot of these are, and they basically resembled a kind of an unusual three-dimensional fingerprint. You can sort of see them a little bit better in this image. Now, this was really strange because it wasn't clear what this was. But more importantly, quite a lot of these sediments were usually discovered around mass extinction events with the most famous one being the N-Triassic mass extinction, which happened approximately 200 million years ago and was actually responsible for making dinosaurs one of the most dominant species on the planet for the next 135 million years. Okay, more realistically, it was actually dinosaurs, flying reptiles or pterosaurs, crocodiles, and of course, a lot of different plants. And though it's unknown what actually caused this particular event, we know that there are several craters, such as the one right here in Quebec, that might have happened around this time. But intriguingly, a lot of fossils from around this extinction event contain these very strange spherical structures, and for many, many years it was not clear what this was. For example, some researchers thought that maybe these are eggs from different types of worms, maybe these are cysts from various algae, or maybe these are spores from various trees such as ferns, mostly because they contain these unusual ribs that do resemble certain types of spores. And so back in 1962, researchers decided to call these Suda Shiriza shells. But over the years they did acquire quite a lot of different names depending on the explanation. And more intriguingly, these unusual fossils seem to appear during various periods of time. Some of them have been discovered approximately half a billion years ago, but some of them were discovered even around the time of the dinosaur extinction 66 million years ago. And once again they all seem to resemble something similar, spherical, fingerprint-like, and obviously relatively small. And so for basically decades, this remained a kind of a mystery, or I guess it wasn't really a mystery. A lot of researchers truly believed these were either eggs or potentially spores from various plants, until this recent study from essentially just a few days ago. The study that as always you can find in the description, and that completely by accident came to a different conclusion based on this YouTube video. And this shows us a really intriguing property of euglenids that has never been seen in action. It's a process of insistment, or basically this organism becoming a cyst in order to protect itself from harsh environment. Now this is very similar to what, for example, tardigrades do as well when they're trying to survive something, and that's of course why tardigrades can survive so much stuff thrown at them. But they're not the only one able to do so, and as you can see from this video, Fabian Weston was able to physically film this, showing us how they do this. Intriguingly, as you can see, for some reason, first of all, they start spinning. It's unclear why, but it seems to happen. And then, slowly, step by step, they seem to acquire these unusual, very weird structures inside, slowly becoming this, a spherical, fingerprint-like structure. Now, you can watch the full video in the link in the description, but in essence, 
it literally shows us that all of these fossils we've been discovering might be the result of this single cell organism that's not really a plant, not really an animal, a bit of both. But all of this making a lot of sense. When there is some kind of a stress from the environment or extremely harsh conditions, euglenids form protective cysts that form these three-dimensional fingerprints. And they then become dormant until the environment improves. But sometimes it doesn't. And so they remain as cysts and become sediment. And based on an extensive analysis, including three-dimensional scans using transmission microscopy, researchers were able to find a lot of similarity to various cysts described in previous studies. And because in this case the structure of this wall does not resemble anything else known to us and seems to be an extremely unique feature produced by euglenids, with these fingerprint structures just being some kind of a wall structure created for support, the visual evidence so far seems to support this argument. But it wouldn't be discovered if it wasn't for this very unique video of an extremely rare event, an insistment of euglenids. As a matter of fact, right now this seems to be the only such video. And so what exactly does this tell us? Well, first of all, obviously it tells us that euglenids existed for an extremely long time, at least half a billion years, but obviously very likely much longer. And they essentially survived in various freshwater environments using very similar techniques this whole time. And more importantly, the study was able to finally connect a lot of these signs of unusual fossils from various studies from as far back as 1950s, connecting them all into one single study, suggesting that it's all the same organism, just from very different timelines and potentially representing slightly different species, highlighting that euglenids existed for a very, very long time. But also suggesting that a lot more studies very likely have even more of these discoveries that were probably misidentified as something else before. But I guess more importantly, it tells us a little bit more about the tree of life, especially involving complex life such as eukaryotes. Because a typical euglenid is made out of one very, very complex cell. A cell that you kind of see right here. Now they'll usually be a little bit different depending on exactly what they do, but they all seem to contain an ability to photosynthesize. In other words, they seem to be able to use sunlight to make their own food just like plants. Despite also being organisms that seem to eat just like animals. In this case, they basically absorb things through the process of phagocytosis. Basically just absorbing things through the cell membrane. And that to some extent possibly explains how they might have acquired some of these features back in the days. It's quite likely that approximately 1 billion years ago, these organisms became separate from other eukaryotes because they might have swallowed something different. They might have swallowed a tiny algae-like organism, which eventually became integrated into them and just became another organelle inside their single cell. But they also acquired a lot of other special powers that's somewhat unique to them and no one else. For example, the way they move. You can actually see this in action in this video that you can find in the description, but this is referred to as metaboli an ability to directly change the cell shape quite dramatically that's normally used for motion but sometimes also used for feeding. And so euglenids can change their shape in a lot of different ways in order to move around. Quite a lot of them are also able to detect light through an unusual eye spot and quite a few of them also contain flagella for extra motion. But not all of them. Yet all of them are able to create cysts. And it's the formation of these cysts that makes them so unique and also gives them that superpower of surviving mass extinction events. Which is what all of these fossils seem to have uncovered. They all come from different periods and from different extinction events, and they all seem to tell the same story. Some euglenids created cysts, did not survive the event, but clearly did not go extinct. Potentially making these organisms some of the biggest survivors on the planet, even sort of competing with tardigrades for the crown of the most indestructible organism on the planet. Although in this case we know quite a lot about tardigrades, yet we still don't really know much about euglenids. Single cells with so many superpowers. Organisms that will be super important for a lot of astrobiology studies as well. Because by studying what happens inside euglenids, we might be able to figure out how some kind of an alien bacteria might be able to survive on other planets as well. But at least for now, what we know about euglenids is that they're definitely survivors. And here's actually another fun fact. A lot of plants today contain what's known as plastids, a membrane-bound organelle responsible for photosynthesis. And it's actually believed today that this is the result of an ancient euglenid absorbing an ancient tiny algae, something we refer to as endosymbiosis. And so most of the photosynthesis on the planet today 
might be the result of euglenids turning into tiny organelles in every single plant out there, technically making them some of the most important organisms on the planet. Or in other words, they basically kind of turn into organelles through a very complex system of symbiosis. But we'll discuss some of this in some of the future videos, so make sure to subscribe. But until future discoveries, or until we discover something else about new glanets, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos in the description, check out the study and also the links for all of the videos I used in the description as well. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.